So in today's video, we are going to build a 48 volt, 16 cell lithium iron phosphate prismatic cell battery, but we're going to use a new BMS system. This is only $72 and it has the same functionality as like a $600 to $1,000 BMS. It has low temperature disconnect and all sorts of other safety features. It even has a column meter. But this is for advanced users only. And so for the first half of this video, we're going to be testing every safety feature that it has. And then at the very end, I'm just gonna mount this on a wooden board and we'll be done with it. And even though this is more for advanced users, if you guys can manage to build a smaller system that's 12 volt with raw cells, you should be able to build this one. It's pretty simple. Also for the price, this is the best that you can get. These raw cells, if you can get them used and then you use a $70 BMS and then an all-in-one unit, you can power a house. So yeah, let's get started and first we're gonna test it out. So let's look at it up close. The first problem I realize is it says 320 amps on here, but you have four 10 gauge wires. Will these handle 320 amps? Absolutely not. So we may need to open it up and solder our own wires on here. Will this handle 100 amps and with a 48 volt battery system, a five kilowatt inverter? Yes, so we can still use these wires for the size system that I wanna build with it. But yeah, this is not gonna be pushing 320 amps. Now let's talk about the other wires on the top. We have a temperature sensor and there is a harness wiring diagram for connecting two temp sensors to this. I have some random temperature sensors from some other solar charge controllers and we're gonna test them out. Um, also we have 17 wires because this is a 16 cell BMS. And then over here, I forgot what this wire is for. I think it's external power supply or something. I forgot, it might be a regulated output, I'm not sure. And this BMS came with this strange little tab thing, which I'm not familiar with actually. So I'm gonna be ripping this off and adding my own terminal lug, and then we will add it to our battery bank on this side. This is the main negative, and then this will go out to our loads. Usually, solar charge controllers, I connect directly to the battery with lithium iron phosphate, not with other chemistries, but with lithium iron phosphate, it's safe to do. I do not have any over voltage protection, and with a high quality MPPT, you will probably not run into any problems for the next 20 years with that system. But for the loads and low voltage disconnect, individual cell monitoring and management, you absolutely need a BMS for the load. So if you have an inverter, you wanna connect it to this. And looking in on the side where the MOSFETs are, I don't see any other tabs to, oh, there it is. Yeah, we could actually fill this whole thing up with wires, but you should also take note that there's not much room between the heat sink and where you have to solder. So when you actually solder more wires, you don't have much room to work with. And these are only 10 gauge, oh, these are 12 gauge. These are very thick. This is a very thick insulation then. It looks like 10 gauge. So yeah, I guess you have to add a bunch of 12 gauge wires to make a 320 amp. That's kind of silly. I wish they just did what a lot of other new BMS manufacturers are doing and just having a huge relay or solid state relay. But um, this will work just fine. These MOSFETs are good. But if you have surge loads, you wanna have a lot of safety headroom. So even though this is 320 amps, I would not put 320 amp loads through an inverter with induction loads with surge through this. It will damage this, okay? You do not wanna do that. But if we're just powering a 100 amp load with 48 volt battery system, this will absolutely work. Or a 24 volt. So yeah, this would be great for that. And we also have some new Sino Poly cells. These are 40 amp hours and we have 16. So these are eight and there's eight in here. And of course, this is from my favorite cell distributor of Sino Poly that I mentioned on my website. They match the cells by internal resistance and capacity and they have bus bars. These are really high quality lithium iron phosphate cells. Because now we have raw cell battery terminals out, we're gonna use some safety glasses. These look kind of dorky, but they will save your eyeballs. I've had hot solder spit into my eye. It's the worst thing ever. If you have an arc with one of these, it can shoot hot metal at your eyeball and you do not want that. And even though we're building a 16 cell battery, I like to put them in packs of four so I can move them and turn them into 24 volt or 12 volt batteries when necessary. So this is a little bit dangerous. We have a lot of cells. I mean, if I were to drop it between these two terminals, we would be having a bad day, all right? You need to be very careful. And so if this was a permanent installation, I would have the batteries like this or some other configuration where they're smaller. But because this is a demonstration video and I just wanna test this BMS, 
we're going to line them up in a straight long row and it will be safer and easier to manage because there's less chance of a big short developing. See, this is a 48 volt pack and I don't have all the bus bars on there because I don't have anything connected yet, just for safety purposes. But if you were to short out these, like direct short, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna have a bad day. I mean, there will be metal flying, so be careful. So we're just gonna wire them up like this. And check out how easy it is to short these battery cells. So if I'm trying to loosen this, see how the bus bar turns with it? You can easily do this too quickly and it will short out this cell. So be very careful when you're tightening and loosening these bus bars. So I highly suggest using an insulated wrench of some form or ratchet. This is a really cheap one from Harbor Freight and it will not short out on these battery terminals. So the first step in connecting the BMS is connecting the balance leads. So I added some terminal connectors at the tips and these will go to each individual cell. And I also added some pure copper lugs that are pretty big. These are for two gauge wire. And so this should handle the current. And then the next step is connecting the temperature sensor leads out to the two temperature sensors. Now the temperature sensor is connected and I put heat shrink over it and this will go out to the battery connection. And before we connect these two batteries together, I noticed they were off by a little bit so I connected them in parallel and then we can finally connect the BMS. This is taking forever. All right guys, moment of truth. I connected all of the balance cables. We have the BMS. Now we just need to hook it up and I'm a little scared. If even one of these wires is incorrect or one of these wires that I connected over here is messed up, it could burn out the whole board. So I followed the instructions and the battery is connected first and now we're gonna put in the first ribbon. All right, it has not caught on fire. Now we do the second ribbon. This is so long that we're gonna have to move it over a little bit like this. Oh my God, guys, we have voltage, no way. Let's connect it to the Bluetooth app then, this is great. And when I bought this board, they sent me a zip file and it had an APK. I sent it to my phone and now we're gonna try to connect to the BMS. We are not getting connection. All right guys, for the last two hours I've been messing with it and I finally turned it on. It was such a pain in the butt. So over here we have two wires, a red and a black and somewhere deep in the manual, it said to turn it on to activate it. You have to put it on a battery of like two to six volts. So I attached it to a single cell of this lithium iron phosphate battery and it turned it on and you can see a small red light and it's flashing so everything should be good now. I could not for the life of me figure it out though. That was very hard. We have 52 volts, perfect. Before it was 40 volts and then I could unactivate it by taking out the balance leads and it would be like three volts. So we are good now. <gasps> no way, check it out. We have BMS, it finally came up. You need to use one, two, three, four to pair this BMS to your phone. That took another like 15 minutes of Google searching, jeez. Now we can open up the app. Let's see if it will connect. Okay guys, it works, oh my God. So after you connect a battery to these two leads, you need to short them out together. That was deeper in the manual. My God, that was hard. So check it out. Now we have all of the settings. We can change the disconnect voltages, current sensing, short circuit protection. This thing has amazing features. Look at charging low temperature protection. How cool is this? Every feature you could ever want. I can't believe we actually got it to work. I was really getting frustrated, you guys. That was not fun. You even have short circuit protection delay, standby time, number of batteries charging, high temperature protection, low temperature, everything. It also has a colon meter so it can tell how much electrons are going in and out of it. Did it just beep? I think it did. Now I need to go through every single one and change these so it works for lithium iron phosphate. I wish they had a pre-calibrated setting for lithium iron phosphate, like most of them, like Victron, but it doesn't. So I need to go through here and do that. Okay, every time you change a setting, it will beep. That's when you know that it's actually changing it. And what's really cool is there's actual discharge protection at low temperature, because with this chemistry, you can actually discharge them to like negative 10 or negative 20 degrees Celsius. So you can actually program that into the BMS as a safety feature. Check this out guys. You can see every voltage of every cell and the temperature 
and everything. It's actually working. How interesting. And it shows the total battery voltage and the MOSFETs if they're open or closed. How cool is this? It's not very pretty, but it has all the features that we need. Cool, it does have a lithium iron phosphate setting. No way. So it works. We just need to charge it up and discharge it and see what happens to the cell voltages. It should balance the cells at a higher state of charge and we will see. I also want to put the thermometers in a frozen cup of water and see if it will disconnect. That would be awesome if it does. And how we're gonna test it is with this 48 volt MPP all-in-one unit. It will be able to charge it and discharge it and whatever else we wish to do with this battery. And because this is a higher voltage inverter, we absolutely need to charge up the capacitors. I have a nice little resistor here, so we are going to do that. All right, now that the capacitors are charged up, I'm gonna connect it to the BMS. So it looks a little bit messy, but the BMS is now connected to this all-in-one unit. Now we just need to turn it on and see if it works. So first we need to turn on the BMS. And now that the BMS is on and the capacitors are charged, we can turn on the inverter. Look at that! Isn't that cool? We did it! <laughs> I can't believe it. This is so cool. So let's put a load on it. Let's run a heat gun. <laughs> Look at that, it runs it at full power. You guys, we're pulling 1,400 watts through 40 amp lithium iron phosphate cells. That's how many cells we have in series. This is really powerful. So right now it shows how many watts is going through the BMS. That's an actual metric on here. Look at this, it's showing 890. And now I can turn it up, watch this. And now we're pushing 1300 watts. Isn't that cool? You can see every detail on here. And now let's turn the load off. And it drops to practically zero. Oh, 31 watts. That's the standby consumption of our inverter back there. Now what I want to do is charge it. So we're going to plug this inverter charger into the wall and see what happens. So this is a colon meter, so it should be able to tell how much power is going in or out. So we're about to find out. Look at that, negative 451 watts. That's how much power is going into the battery right now. I'm starting to like this. I want to make like a permanent setup with this. This is really cool. So the next step is testing if the low temperature disconnect for charging works. Right now it's charging. So we're going to take one of these temperature sensors and stick it in a bowl with frozen uh, green beans. And we're going to see if it will actually turn it all off. Oh my gosh, look at that. 17 degrees Celsius, 16 degrees Celsius, 15. Oh, I have it set to three degrees Celsius. Come on. So we're at four degrees Celsius. All right, we're at one degree Celsius and it is not turning off. Maybe you need both of the thermometers at one degree Celsius. Dang it. So they're both potted so I can stick them in this water right here. Oh, look at that. Seven degrees Celsius and zero degrees. We're almost there, come on. Low temperature protection, no way. It just turned off the charging because I got both of the thermometers cold. Isn't that so cool, you guys? It turned off the charging. Now I'm gonna warm up the temperature sensors and try to disengage the low temperature protection. No way. And now it can start charging again. So once it heats up, it connects the battery again, so it will charge. And now it started charging by itself. See, we're at 196 watts. It was at zero a second ago. You guys, we have an actual low temperature disconnect BMS that's cheap. This was only like $72. How cool is that? I also noticed that the amp hour metric is staying at 39.999. So I guess it's waiting for it to climb to the highest state of charge and then the colon meter will figure out what state of charge it is by how many electrons go in and out. So yeah, I'm going to test that in a second, but yeah, after it's done charging, it should be able to do that. Seriously, this is like a standalone system. This is two kilowatts of storage and this thing produces like 1.8 or 1.6 kilowatt output and it can charge at 500 watts so if you could put this whole system with the BMS in a box you have a very highly capable system and you can do a little over 2000 watts of input for your solar array so I mean think about how small this is 
you would have to build a huge system to get the same stats. I mean, it's incredible what you can do right here. So I let it charge overnight and we have an over voltage warning and it disconnected the charger. Now what I want to know is if the cola meter works. So we charged all the way up. Now we're going to discharge and see if the where it says amp hours will decrease as I discharge the battery. So let's test it. I was confused because I turned the inverter on and it wasn't showing up on here, but it's because there was a bypass mode in here. So I need to disconnect the utility so it will power it from the battery. Yeah, now it says 1500 watts. And look at that, the amp hours are decreasing. It actually works as a cola meter. So let's quickly review how to set the capacity monitor. All you have to do is go to battery physical capacity setting and set it to the cell size that you're using. These are 40 amp hour cells. So I put it to 40 and then you click down here and then you charge up the battery one time and then while you discharge it, it will set it automatically. See how you have 38 amp hours? That's how much I have left available after running this large load. I could do a low voltage disconnect situation, but I trust that it works because everything else is working. So I'm just gonna build a full system with it and test it like that because this is great. So in order to test this system to see if it can work for years on end and in freezing cold environments, I connected the BMS to this wooden board, it's maple plywood, and then I made a shelf that's rated to a thousand pounds with heavy duty um, L brackets. And we have the battery down here, we have a fuse right here, we have the BMS attached to the board, and this is the main negative and the main positive. We have the balance leads and temperature sensor wires, and then two wires that go up to the MPP unit. So it's a very, very easy to construct simple system. These are only 40 amp hour cells, but if you made one with like 100 or 200 amp hour cells, you could easily power a house. Um, at 48 volts with this, you could power that large of an inverter, no problem. So, so far I really like it, but it was such a pain in the butt to connect it initially and to activate it by attaching a voltage source to those two little wires. So as long as you can do that, and it turns on, you are set. I haven't had to do anything at all and it works perfectly. And it's crazy cheap. This was $72. And if you buy these cells used and then you buy an MPP all in one unit, you're talking about a very powerful system for very cheap. So I imagine that people are going to use these in their own DIY systems and save a lot of money, which is really cool. We need that option on the market. And for me, I'm going to test this over the next couple of years. I'm going to leave this in here just like this. Um, this is programmed with low temperature disconnect. So in the winter here, it's going to get freezing, freezing cold. So it will be so cool to see how well this works. Because I'm using this as like a backup system, I'm going to lower the charge voltage substantially to like, I don't know, 70% state of charge on the charge voltage curve. And that will prolong the charge cycle life because if these are at a high state of charge for years on end at high temperatures, you're gonna have problems. This shed will have temperature regulation coming soon, but that's gonna be another video. But yeah, so far this thing makes me happy. It was a pain to set up but I do like it. So yeah, I hope you guys liked this video and I liked building this. This was super fun. So yeah, let me know what you guys think below and I'll talk to you later. Bye.